Hey, I am Victor Huerta on today's real estate show. I wanted to touch base and give you some hot tips on maybe you have been considering on selling your house and buying a house, but you just don't know how to tie this all together. So come on back and I'm gonna show you and I'm gonna give you some hot tips on how to accomplish your goals. Ready, set, record. Hey, welcome back my friends to the number one real estate show where I bring you real, raw, and relevant real estate tips for you sellers and buyers in this game that we call real estate. So you probably have a lot of questions. Maybe you've lived in your house for quite some time and you're just looking to upgrade, or maybe you have a lot of cash in your house, just dead equity sitting there and you don't know what to do with it. And you're looking like, hey, why don't we sell our house, take that money, roll over and buy another house, and then use some of that cash to pay off some debt, take a vacation, etc. It is your money. You get to choose what you wanna do. Now, I know you have a lot of questions because I had the same amount of questions as well. So let's deep dive into the whiteboard and I'm gonna map all this out and hopefully it'll explain everything in clear formats and give you some hot tips on how to go about doing this on selling your house and buying another one. So let's get right into it. Okay, so let's go ahead and deep dive right into the whiteboard and let's get right into this and you'll be seeing me in and out of the video. But for right now, what I wanna do is I kinda of wanna draw this out for you. So you are kinda of right here right now in this area right here. This is you right here. You are wanting to maybe sell and buy another house and you just don't know which steps you want to take or how to get this. But your ultimate goal is maybe to get over here on this side, okay? And what you're trying to do here is just try to see, okay, is it a good time to sell my house and buy another one? And you have a lot of questions and I totally understand this because right here is you have questions on the sell side and then you have questions on the buy side. And right here you have this big old gap that we have right here. This gap right here is where all the questions are at. And this is what causes a lot of fear where you don't know how to, you know, how to do this and what the process is. So I was in the same boat as you, okay? I was in the same boat as you is when we were actually buying three properties at the same time, we had a lot of debt equity in one of our houses. And not only we were buying three properties, we were pregnant as well, but the reward was is after we did this we accomplishment, we actually took a trip to Italy. So we bought three homes as rental investments, okay? And this is kind of the process that what we did, but I'm gonna show you a process as a homeowner, not as an investor, on how you could do the same thing. And you maybe you can create your first house as an investment property and as a rental portfolio, or maybe you just can use the money to pay off some debt, buy another house, upgrade with nice granite countertops, flooring, etc. a bigger home, maybe you've outgrown it whatever your situation is, but I'm gonna to explain to you the, the entire situation on how this works, okay? So let's go ahead and just deep dive into this. So you're looking to sell right here to buy over here. And there's, you know, this whole, this whole issue right here is you have questions, okay? So let's go ahead and deep dive on these hot tips that I'm gonna give you right here on how to do this. And you know, we've done this plenty of times with, we've helped a lot of clients actually turn into an investment property. We've actually helped clients, clients just upgrade to another house or just move out of state <coughs> and buy another house. So uh, the number one thing you wanna know is where will you go, okay? So that's a question you need to ask yourself is where will you go? Now, the reason why I ask you that question is, you know, are you liking any homes out there on the market right now? You know, do you like, do you like? Now, this is very important because before you even think about selling your house or putting your house for sale is you want to know if you like any homes on the market, okay? And then also what you want to go is you want to go, you want to go see, right? You want to go see, smell, feel and touch, um, walk around the floor plan, make sure you like these houses. And another thing is you want a real estate agent to show you what's under contract, what's pending and what has actually, you know, what are active homes that you can actually see. And right now you're probably saying, well, why do you want me to look at these active, do you mean these under contract and pending homes? 
and you're like, I can't buy these homes and it doesn't make any sense. But it kind of makes sense because when you're looking to sell and buy a house, you're in a different bracket here. You want to live in a specific subdivision, a school district, maybe a different community, a gated community, etc. So you want to see what that subdivision and what those houses are going for. Okay, so that's very important. So let's deep dive. And that's the first step is just knowing where you're going to go. Okay, the second step is a huge step right here, which is you want to prequal, prequal yourself. Okay, and it's very important because one, maybe you can buy the next house with not selling okay this is huge and what i mean by that is going to make the move a lot easier from house a to house b because you don't have to do this all at the same time you could sell your house and then actually i mean you, you don't have to sell your house you can buy the other house and then put your house on the market later or if you find another house, buy your house, move all your items to the new house, then come in and sell your house later. Now you have to factor in the, the double payments that you'd be paying, but maybe that's a better opportunity than doing it when you have to sell, okay? Because when you have to sell, you have to do this all at the same time, okay? When you prequal. So you can prequal these both ways as not selling your house and selling, you, and, um, and selling your house, okay? It's gonna depend on your debt to income ratio and how much payment you can afford by doing this transaction another thing it's gonna another thing you can do is <coughs> how much down payment are you gonna need for the new house okay and you also want to know because if you're upgrading you want to know what your payments gonna be to make sure you can afford it before you even sell your house okay so these two items are big too as well use your down payments moving forward and how much your payment is gonna be and then a couple more things is um, if it's if it's gonna be contingent on you selling a house okay and what I mean what I mean by contingent is when you're contingent on selling a house is you have to actually sell your house okay before you buy your house so you can't buy your house unless it's contingent on you selling your house that kind of makes your offer a little bit weaker if somebody else is just coming in with 20% down and buying the house outright you have to kind of compete with it and you have to find an agent who can actually negotiate go to war for you when you're buying a house so if you have to sell your house it's contingent on you selling your house to buy the other house it kind of gives you a way out as well if the buyer that's buying your house can't commit to buying your house and you have an offer on this other house well you can get your earnest money back but you're back to square one okay so that's what contingent means pretty much what it means okay so let's let's go back to the whiteboard and let's kind of let's kind of touch base on a couple more items you know i think the most important thing too as well um in this is you know is getting yourself ready getting you ready and your family okay because this is gonna take some effort to sell your house right <laughs> you have to get yourself ready for some a little bit of stress because you are going to feel a little bit of stress in selling your house because you have to get this house ready to sell and then you're also looking for another house to buy and then you have to keep up with your job, you know, whatever, if you have kids, family activities, etc. So, you know, it, it will be a little stressful, but it's gonna be rewarding at the end because why? Because the ultimate goal is for you to buy your other house. Okay, number four is to is to get your house ready. To get your house ready to sell, okay? You have to get your house ready to sell, right? Meaning when you get your house ready to sell, what I'm talking about here is if it's clean, no clutter, make sure the backyard is clean, make sure the front yard landscaping looks good, make, make sure it smells good, make sure there's no clutter. Um, if you have pets, we have to try to, you have to try to figure out the pet situation, showings, we have to get the showings, uh, what days, what times, etc. So we have to get your house ready to sell, okay? That's another thing we have to do is get your house ready to sell, okay? And then number five, we're gonna go down, we're gonna deep dive into this real deep, guys. I'm just giving you all the tips. Um, you wanna give yourself some time to sell. And what I mean about this is you wanna give yourself at least 45 to 60 days, okay? <coughs> Excuse me, I had a little cough, uh, been sick a little bit, so <coughs> I have a little cough going on. So time to sell, 45 to 60 days, okay? Now the reason why is because when you have your house here to sell, okay? right here your house is ready to sell you have a buyer who's gonna buy your house well they have 15 days okay 15 days to do all the inspections 
or everything. It's just, it's, it's crazy, right? And the reason why I say 15 days is because the buyer is going to put an offer in your house. You guys come to an agreement to, to sell your house, okay, to the buyer. The buyer is going to order a home inspection, okay? They do the home inspection. They got 10 days, okay? On the, and then they have to send you the report and ask for all the repairs, and then you have five days to respond. So you have a total of 15 days just before the buyer can make a, a really, really decision on moving forward and buying your house. So that's why you want to give yourself a little bit more time, okay? And what I'm, you want 45 to 60 days is because not only are you selling your house, you're buying a new house as well, okay? And you're going to go through the same pro, uh, process as well. So give yourself some time, okay? And that's something that your agent should negotiate and go to war for you that, hey, look, look home buyer, look, uh, talk to the buyer's agent and be like, hey, my client is selling a house to buy another house. So we're gonna need more than a 30 day close, okay? We're gonna need 45 to 60 days. And that's something that your agent should, should do for you, okay? When your house is ready to go on the market, okay? You wanna price it correct. Okay, from day one. And the reason why is because you need to know your market, okay? You need to know your market, okay? If, if the market is trending downward, then you need to price it correctly, okay? If, if the market is trending upward, then you can increase your price a little bit and then kind of kind of cut it back down a little bit as well. But you need to price it correct because once that house that hits the market that you wanna buy, especially if it's contingent on you selling your house, your house has to have an offer, okay? You cannot submit another offer on another house unless you have your house under contract, if it's contingent. If you don't have to sell your house, well, you know, you can just go out there, place an offer, and get it going. So make sure you price it correct, okay? You don't want your house being stale, sitting on the market um, for, for quite some time, okay? Now, this one's a big one, I would, I would say for, you know, just for the, any agent you're gonna hire, is when you accept an offer, on the sell side, okay, you want your agent to go to work for you. <laughs> these are some tips. Now, these these are some insider, these are some insider tips here that I'm giving you as a selling agent to make sure your selling agent, whoever you hire, whether it's us or somebody else, to make sure that they do this work, okay? Because they need to inspect the buyer, they need to inspect the lender, they need to inspect the buyer's agent. Whoever is buying your house, they need to do some work. Okay, it's not just putting your house on the market. Oh, we got an offer. Here we go. Let's go buy another house. And then it falls apart and then it causes stress for everybody, especially you. Only you, you know, you're going to handle most of the stress. So let me give you some really quick hot tips here on what to do here. Is you want your selling agent to make sure they get a loan status update every seven days from the buyer's lender. Okay. Now, what that's going to do is that going to that's going to give you an updated your selling agent and you how their loan is doing on the buying side when you're they're buying your house. OK, another thing is you want to make sure is the buyer selling to buy? Are they doing the same thing as you? OK, are, are they actually selling a house to buy your house? OK, because if that's the case then you gotta actually have your agent make sure that they take care of the other side of the party, which the, is the other buyer who's buying their house, who's gonna buy your house. See, so it's like a domino effect here. And you know, it's very tricky. It's, it, it can be a very smooth process. You just gotta make sure your agent is doing the work, okay? Now, and then another thing is, <laughs> when it comes to the Binzer process, right? So when the buyer does the inspection, on your house, okay? When they do the inspection process on your house, they're gonna want repairs, okay? Now, you're not gonna have a whole lot of time to do these repairs. So, instead of doing the repairs and hires all these contracts, why don't you do an exchange for money, okay? Meaning that, you know what, buyer, you did the inspection here, you want these repairs here. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you money in lieu of these repairs because I don't have time to be doing the repairs when I have to not only sell my house, get it ready, okay, go shopping for another house, move from point A to point B and still hold on a job, still take care of my family. I just don't got time to do the repairs. You know, it all depends on your stress level. 
Now, you can go ahead and hire contractors and get it done if it's cheaper. But I tell most of my clients like, hey, this is the easy way out. Okay, give a little bit more money to the buyer. They can fix it when they come in or they don't have to fix it, they can live with it. Most buyers don't even come in and fix the items they requested. They don't, okay? They're just being picky, to be honest with you, unless they're major, major items. So think about that process right there. Exchange some money in lieu of repairs after the inspection. It just makes it a lot easier for, for you, okay? Now, <coughs> a big one right here is agents are always fighting for a stupid title company, okay? They're fighting for a title company. So what you want to do here is just use one, oh, hold on, let me get this back here, just won't use one title company. And the reason why is because you have a buyer here, you're selling here, and then you're buying here, okay? So you just want to have one person. You don't want to have too many people in the loop and the communication process, okay? So just do one person for the title company. Choose one title co company, makes it so much easier when you're buying, when you're selling and buying a house and transferring funds all over the place, okay? Another thing is, let's just say that you don't need to sell your house to buy another house. Well, you can use something called a post possession agreement. Okay, now what this means is you're, you're pretty much the buyer that's buying your house that you're selling, okay, and you're buying another house. Well, you don't have to sell this. You don't have to sell to buy this house, okay? And what this means is like, hey, buyer, you can buy my house, but I'm going to need like two to three days to move my stuff to my next house, okay? So I'm going to need to rent back my own house to move, okay? So this is a very powerful move because it, this allows you some time to, this allows you a lot of time to sell your house, okay? And the buyer's like, okay, well, I don't need to move in that fast as well because I'm coming in from out of states, I'm coming in from an apartment, my lease is not due, maybe, maybe they have a lease on a house and you know they still have like 15 to 20 days. Well, you could be like, well, I'm gonna need some time to rent back my house to you and I'll pay you a daily rate in order for me to move and get everything ready to my new house. That's a very powerful move, okay? It's it's a little tricky on how to do, but most brokerages will brokerages where real estate agents are at, they allow them to do that. Some don't. We've done this plenty of times. We've done a post-possession, we've done a pre-possession agreement. You know, we just gotta make sure that all the information is correct, not only from the lenders, the title companies, and all the agents. It can be done, but it actually saves you a lot of time, okay? A lot of time and a lot of stress, okay? So, let's go to number 10. Man, I hope you're enjoying these tips because this is some really good stuff here. You know, if you are contingent <coughs> on selling your house, meaning that you have to sell in order to buy another house, well then you're gonna have to do a one day move. And then you're probably like, a one day move? What do you mean a one day move? That, that is impossible. Like, there's no way that can happen. It can, okay? It's a one day move and let, us, let me draw this out to you. It, it's very, very simple, okay? You think that you're, you have to sign all your docs to sell, sign all your docs to buy, and then move on all in one day. No, that's not the process. When you sell your house, you're gonna sign like five to seven days in advance. When, you, when you're buying your new house, you're gonna sign three to five days in advance. So the only thing you have to worry about is just the move, okay? We do all the paper shuffling, we do all the money shuffling all over the place, and as long as your agent preps you in advance, this is very doable, it is very, very easy um, to do. We've done it ourselves in our personal lives, and that's why I say it's very easy. You just gotta make sure you do the prep work, okay? So <coughs> let's, 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 help, let's, uh, let's do this uh, drawing real quick. So. You are right here. This is what you're, this is, you're selling your house and then you're buying this other house, okay? What you're gonna do here is you're gonna move in one day, okay? And what I mean by this is you're gonna transfer all your stuff here. So what you're gonna need is you're gonna need a moving truck, okay? A moving truck is so easy. In the a.m., in the morning, you're packing all your stuff into the moving truck and then your moving truck is trucking over here 
and it's gonna come over here and deliver all your items, okay? One or two trips, three trips, whatever it is, okay? And then in the PM, you are at your new house, okay? Now what this does is, this makes it kind of simple, is while you're doing this, you have your, your lender, your realtor, and title working for you, and you don't even know it in the background. So they're just, what, what they're doing is they're just shuffling all this paperwork okay so they got all this paperwork your loan docs etc and they're shuffling it from one place to the other okay so and then you got another party over here <coughs> if you look at this correctly is this is your other the other party who's buying your house okay this is the buyer okay you're selling over here and then you're buying over here well, what the title company is doing is, is they got all the paperwork for each transaction, okay? And then remember, this seller is also maybe buying a house or leaving out of state. So they're taking a big care of almost like four transactions at the same time. So you, all you have to do is concentrate is on the moving side, okay? Day one, one day move. That's what you're concentrating on is right here is a one day move, okay? This is what you need to concentrate on is this one day move. Okay. Let everybody else take care of everything else and you're good to go. Okay. I, I know it makes it seem a lot easier, but this is one of the tips I always give my clients is, Hey, just, just take care of you. We'll take care of the rest. Okay. And that's number 10 and number 11. Oh, let me do this wrong color. My daughter loves this thing. She, we do some math here and we do letters and reading. So, uh, number 11 is, you know, you need to celebrate. Celebrate and take a vacation, okay? Because you just went through a whole process right here. You know, celebrate, take a take a vacation, okay? And the reason why I say that is you went through a lot in just selling your house and buying a house and moving and doing all this work. And, you know, it is stressful. I'm not going to lie to you. It is stressful. We've done it plenty of times. But these 10 steps, 11 steps, I hope they make it a lot smoother and easier for you because once you have a plan and mapped it out, then it makes it so much simpler. So I'm gonna drop the show notes down um, in a link below. So if you wanna download them, it'll kind of give you a guide of what's going on. There's a lot more, there's a little bit more items that can go wrong. There's, I mean, not go wrong. There's a little bit more items that I can actually list. I just don't wanna make the video too long, but I just wanted to give you the top 11 tips, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this video, but I mean, <coughs> I'll, I'll drop the show notes here, but pretty much that's what it looks like, okay? There's a really good 11 steps that I just gave you, and it's all mapped out here. And what I'll do is, is I'll drop my show notes that I have as via text and kind of give you uh, an example of what to do. Um, if you want the image, I, I probably can capture the image as well and give it to you. But uh, that's pretty much it, how to sell your house and buy another house at the same time. Those are 11 awesome tips. Um, we do have more tips that we can go over, but just didn't wanna make it too long. But we just hope you enjoyed this video. Hey, so I hope you enjoyed that video and those 11 tips, and hopefully that'll help you when you're actually selling to buy another house. And once again, I am Victor Huerta, and thank you for watching the number one real estate show where we entangle all the real estate lingo so you can make a better sound decision whether you're thinking about selling, buying, or investing in the Valley of the Sun. Hey, do us a favor, head on over to our YouTube channel, hit subscribe button, where we give you all the home buyer and home seller tips free to your video. If you hit subscribe, click the bell, you'll get notified via email when our next video drops. And of course, of course, the next whiteboard video is coming soon.